The Holocaust and Night. With thousands of movies, TV shows, books, documentaries, and interviews, it would be negligible to say that the Holocaust and its effects on people hasn't been explored thoroughly since its occurrence. Yet, with every coming generation, and with the amount of living survivors decreasing rapidly, these days, the narrative and significance behind the Holocaust can be lost in translation. For this reason, personal and relatable stories that transverse any generation are crucial to tell the true nature behind the events that had transpired. Elie Bizel, in his book Night, is able to connect to any of his readers at an emotional and engaging level. Eliezer was taken with his family from his town called Siget in Transylvania when he was only a teenager. The Hungarian police first created a Jewish ghetto where no one could get in or out, imp imprisoning the Jews in their own house. Then Eli and his family were stuffed into a cart and taken to the Auschwitz-Birkenau camp. At arrival, his mother and sister were separated from Eli and his father and sent to the gas chamber. Eliezer experienced the true horrors of being in the concentration camp as he was starved, labored, and beat up multiple times. Eli recounts his struggles with God in maintaining his Jewish faith as he felt as though there was no hope. For example, Eli on the eve of Rosh Hashanah gathers with the rest of the Jews during the apolapse in the concentration camp, where they all pray together and, become, and he becomes angry thinking, why should they pray to God who abandoned us? Never shall I forget those flames that consume my faith forever. Never shall I forget the nocturnal silence that deprived me for all eternity of the desire to live. Never shall I forget those moments that murdered my, my God and my soul and turned my dreams into ashes. Another theme that Wizo delves into into great detail was the way that the camp dehumanized him and stripped his right to life and other rights. Nazis class classified Jews as being subhuman and blamed them for their country's dec decline. They treated them as farm animals as they robbed them and stripped them from their identity. In the book, when Ellie's father is sick and lies on the floor, his father cries for Ellie as he is beaten up by other inmates who steal his food. The inmates say that he smelled bad. Moreover, when they m were moved from one camp to another to escape the front of the Russians, they would pass German towns while passing in carts, and people would throw pieces of bread into the carts. With this, the people would be amused as the prisoners fought and killed each other for the bread. Ellie's survival story sheds a light into the worst parts of humanity and the truth behind the hell he experienced in the concentration camps. His book stands as a staple for human rights and why it is important to learn and recognize the crimes of the Holocaust. Ellie used his anguish and unbearable pain to send a mes message to the world. But I am appalled by the leaders. Because if the leaders had spoken up again and again, the people would have known, and then they would have acted. So why the silence? Why the complicity? I don't know. The genocides like the Holocaust should never occur again, since they regress the progress that humanity has made. Such topics ought to be studied and delved into for the sake of achieving world peace.